All right. Good morning, everybody. It's nice to see so many people here this morning. Probably something to do with this being Lisa's last meeting, but true. It's daytime. All right. Do I have the right? Here we go. Green lights on now. So we've got a lot of stuff to get through this morning. It's nice to see so many people. Do we have any visitors this morning? Oh, nobody. Well, we have our speaker. Lance is here. Thank you for coming. Um, you guys should have brought friends, but oops. Okay. So we will move on here. <clears throat> okay, so our first thing, um, need to approve our May uh, general meeting minutes. Um, Kathy Purvis emailed those out to everybody um, earlier in the week, maybe it was last week. Um, did anybody have any corrections or changes that they wish to make? Okay, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Okay, Richard. You seconded last time. <laughs> okay. All right. Second again. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. So today, oh, vote. Mickey's not here. Mickey keeps me in line. Okay. Uh, all in favor, say aye. All opposed? Okay. Minutes are approved. Now I need to put remember to vote. <laughs> Okay, so today happens to be Flag Day. Um, so in June 14th is also the birthday of the United States Army. So do we have any Army veterans here? One, two. And thank you for your service. <laughs> if there's anybody online, we had uh, we thank you for your service too. We had John. Benninger and Larry Peterson in the room, and I'm sure there's lots of lots of y'all that are Army brats like me. Sorry, Don, Don, Don was in the Army too. Oh, he wasn't. He wasn't listening. Oh. <laughs> That's why he's so so nice and friendly. Okay. Anyway. I, I grew up, I grew up an army brat and I was very proud of my dad's service and so I thought since our meeting falls on today I would mention it. Okay. Uh John. Let's see. Test. It should be on. You get a team program this morning. I'm in the midst of my cataract replacement, so I've got one down okay. and another one coming. So my eyes are all wonky. Fortunately, my talking world, my talking capability isn't any worse than it used to be. We have 19 new recertifications this month. But before I get to that, I want to report, recognize two other individuals, not possibly, but late. We have a 5,000 hour recipient who's most late, which is Roy Morgan. And Lisa Meyer with her Presidential Service Award. I'll let Kathy talk more about that in a minute. And then on. You realize, Lisa, this means you can't leave. <laughs> Uh, we had 19 recertifications this month. We have 39 for the year. It seemed a lot of people needed advanced training hours, so thanks for the people that put that together. If your name is on the list of those that have recertification identified, I want everybody to come to the front, not only for those 19, but anybody that's recertified gonna, this year. I'm going to stand over here. <laughs> Need some more lights. Anybody that's recertified this year, and there's 39 people. The few of you that don't get to come up, sorry about that. Report your hours, Mark. Did you want me to read those? Did you want me to read the names? I think they say them. Okay. 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 
So for those online, half of the room was standing up here. Yes, sir. Okay, Lisa, wait, wait up. Come here. <clears throat> okay, oops, wait a minute. Okay. Okay. Oh wait, hold, don't don't turn the lights out yet. Okay. All right. So along with Lisa's um, service uh, award, it's an, oops, sorry. So there's a nice little, uh, oh, oh my goodness. All right, here we go. We'll come back over here. So here you go, Lisa. <laughs> I am smiling. <laughs> this is my face. <laughs> oh, that light is really bright. <laughs> All right. So there is a nice a, a nice uh, certificate signed by the president, Joe Biden, and there's also a letter. Uh, that, that accompanies this, it talks about the program. And there's also two pins for you here. So, we, yay. <clears throat> yes, Ed. So, hold on. Okay, there's a Honda pilot in the parking lot with their flashers on. What color? Gray. Silver. Okay, there are now two people hit it out. Okay. <laughs> okay. I have lost control. All right. We also have Kathy Purvis, um, who uh, hit 250 hours. So, so come here. Uh oh, <laughs> John's got something for her. Hey, right, thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations and thank you. Yeah, we have more pictures this morning. Oh, we didn't get a picture with Roy. Uh, well, do you want do you want to do it a little bit later? Because you look like you're. All right, to what? We'll do it. We'll do it at the break time. Okay. All right. Okay. So there's there's the reason why Lisa is leaving us. Okay. Yeah, you know, I thought Lisa, I thought this was I I loved this picture, so I shamelessly stole it. I'm sorry. So that's a reason that's that's one of the best reasons. So Okay. Um our impact data. So we had 1000 hours of volunteer time in May and year to date that gets us to 7700. Um, AT 273, which puts us almost to 1100. The volunteer time numbers are starting to track more um, towards our pre COVID. So this is really awesome. It, um, our impact data uh, 165 adults, 837 youth um, for a total of 1,000. And year to date, that puts us at 18. 18,122, that's a great number for five months. So you all are to be congratulated. And Ruby, thank you for uh, getting a lot of those volunteer opportunities for us. It's a lot of great outreach in the, in the community. And Oren, you know, thanks for pulling together all those uh, other volunteer things that we do. Okay, guys, let's start migrating back to our seats. Grab what you need and we'll get started again. Make sure you signed in, please. 
Okay. Okay, everybody. Okay. Hey guys. Brian's gonna Brian wants to um, talk to us about the fish kill. So if we could please get back to our seats, I'd appreciate it. I'm gonna bring that bell from upstairs, I think. There's a big cowbell upstairs. Now I know why it's up there. Oh. Okay, where? Oh no, now I lost Brian. Oh. <laughs> Thanks much. Right, thanks for the few minutes, folks. Here, uh, I hate to break up the the hugs and the high fives. Um, Patty Brinkmeyer uh, wasn't able to be here; she had a previous commitment, and I was I was a little late getting here myself this morning at 5:45. Uh, began an interview about this fish kill with CBS News, then did Fox Weather Channel at eight something so uh who would have thought that this fish kill would have taken on the life that it did um so i'll just kind of give you the the reader's digest of, of how we are dealing with this and some things and you can if you have questions or comments or whatever you guys are always great to do that so it's, it's an educated audience we all, we all know that but anyway uh mac patty said it was about friday actually the game warden i think we came down thursday evening and initially identified the situation as a fish kill. Uh, the local, uh, one of the local game wardens, uh, they actually dropped a dissolved oxygen meter out in the water to make sure what it was. And the dissolved oxygen levels were like 0.2. I mean, they were way down there. But as as you guys are probably familiar, but kind of the we get a lot the questions and inquiries that we get on this, as you can well imagine, are the spectrum. And if you follow social media, you can, you know, it's all over the, it's apocalyptic versus it's no big deal. It's, you know, all this other kind, you know, it just, everybody wants to chime in with it. But basically the situation, Parks and Wildlife is calling it a eutrophic event. That's your new word of the day. Um, but essentially it's a perfect combination, perfect slash bad, however you want to call it, an alignment of, of conditions that, if you extract any one or two out of them, it probably doesn't happen or doesn't happen near as bad. But the the Reader's Digest version, if you will, um, if you'll think back just to a couple of weeks ago, our morning temperatures were in the 60s. Now our afternoons are in the 90s. I think the low today was like 81 or something. I mean, it was this, we had this incredible condensed heat wave that took off. And as, as most are, are pretty familiar, Warm water does not hold dissolved oxygen very well. Fresh water, salt water, it doesn't matter. We have the same conditions in fresh water. Fresh water is a little bit different because it's so much more affected by the vegetation. Uh, your, what your photosynthesis. Um, but, but on some level, it affects our salt water too. We don't have the plants in the Gulf, but we do have organisms like, like algae and some other things. And the river delta probably does comp complicated or compound the issue because of the nutrients that are coming down through there, uh, whether that's algae, whether that's bacteria, whether that's all the other nutrients that on any given week is roll of the dice of whatever somebody put in their yard and in, in Fort Bend County or whatever it is, you know, you get that cocktail that comes down the river that gets elevated during during our high water events. We had so much rain off and on uh, that's still probably compounding the situation. But you get those conditions. Plus, I mean, you drive by the surf and it's flat i mean who would have ever thought that i mean i i was out there uh the other day was driving to our event at san Luis pass and there's just dozens of fishermen on Fallas island and, and, the, and the surf was like looked like glass there was hardly even a wave on the shore and so you line up all of those conditions dramatic increase in temperatures no wave action to aerate that at all uh cloudy days that prolong so if there is the vegetation they're not photosynthesizing they're actually consuming oxygen compounded by what's down the river and you will get these pockets 
either offshore, maybe even in the intercoastal. I don't think they really know exactly where all of this happened, but pockets of where low dissolved oxygen will trap those fish. And particularly the menhaden. I mean, if you've ever been fishing and thrown a cast net and gotten menhaden and put them, you can take your bait bucket, dip it in the very water that they come out of with an aerator, put them in your bait bucket, they die. They are just not a hardy fish, not a powerful swimmer. A lot of those bigger fish can, can do that um, initially. Um, but although there were some stingrays, there were some small sharks, there were other fish that were in some larger, but you're talking about 95 plus percent menhaden that were affected by that. And so people go down to the beach and they see, you know, ankle deep pile of dead fish that spans 20 or 30 feet wide. And they think, you know, the world's about to come to an end. Um, but in reality, it's not that terribly uncommon. doesn't mean it's pleasant, but it's not something that's absolutely foreign to where we are, given when those conditions and those things line up. And so that's kind of where we are with it. Our beach crews jumped on it Friday morning early, and they were out there till the evening on Friday, early morning Saturday till evening Sunday, same thing. And if you go down there today, you go to Quintana Beach, you won't find a dead fish. Um, it was a four or five day event. You know, once the fish kind of realize it's a summertime pattern, once things kind of balance out, it disperses, um, things can kind of adjust. Mother Nature does that pretty well. Um, but that first initial shock when those temperatures come up and, it, and it's, a, it's almost like a choking effect on those fish. And they just, you know, mammals like us, we have lungs. But fish, even though they have gills, they have to have, they can't go very long without oxygen either. And so you start thinking in terms like that, and particularly those smaller frontline menhaden where there's, you know, literally millions of them, uh, and they get, they get trapped in those, those zones, and then they wash ashore. And then the prevailing currents, you know, that's why you have the big stripe in the water out on the Brazos River. Those currents will push them all out there, and then they'll just work their way in. Um, one of the things we did do was once they finally did come ashore, we scraped them off and raked them, and we didn't just put them in the dumpster. We actually pushed them back into the sand dunes and covered them up. It's a pretty good compost. It's a pretty good organic mix uh, to decompose there to feed those dune grasses. So, you know, a long story made longer. Um, it, you know, there's no reason to believe that the water is toxic. It was not a red tide event here. They did have one actually farther down. This was not. Uh, test after test after test showed that. Um, it, is, it was a low dissolved oxygen uh, event that was that was kind of this perfect storm, uh, particularly location with the river delta that, that made it that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's what we do. We have we're down there seven days a week anyway. Um, and we had the heavy equipment. We rent heavy equipment. We rent, we rent front end front end loaders to clean the beach anyway. Uh, we just thought it was going to be sargasm and driftwood, not dead fish. So, yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, good question. What we've really been able to, to determine is it went down to Bryan Beach, probably a little bit farther down that way to the southwest. But we were cleaning dead fish all the way down almost to San Luis Pass, not near the numbers down on the on the northeast side. But those prevailing currents, uh, everything which tied in with the river, uh, it, it concentrated primarily at Quintana and Bryan Beach. In fact, Bryan Beach may still have some. I don't know. The city of Freeport kind of deals with that. But you get down near the mouth of the river was where it was the worst. Um, I've not really been over to Matagorda uh, to see what they got, but I'm not hearing that they really got much. It did seem to be kind of right into this area, right around the mouth of the Brazos in Quintana. Uh, we get asked, was this the worst one you've ever seen? Um, a couple of years ago, 2021, I believe there was a more statewide uh, where you had actually millions of fish impacted. It was not as concentrated in Brazoria County. So for us here, this is the most prolific one that I've seen but certainly not the only one. Every few years, it does kind of seem to make its way around. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's a good question. You know, on a red tide, the birds will kind of eat the eyes out of the fish, and that's it, Then they'll leave the rest alone. On this one, we had some shark activity initially, but I've seen this with crawfish. They will get so sick of eating, they're like, oh, no. I'm going on. Let's go see what's happening at the landfill. I'm tired of fish for now. Where it's got, you know, you can actually get that. And they're like, uh, seen it, been there, done that. Let's, you know, let's go to another buffet somewhere else. Um, 
But, you know, and then once it really starts decomposing, you know, seagulls are a scavenger ish. Um, but you know, they'll, they'll move on to other, other things as well. Um, and so at some point it's, it's overwhelming, I think, even to those, even to the birds, uh, you know, then the wading birds, they're a little more live prey oriented, uh, those, those great egrets and, and, uh, great blue herons, they'll, 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 you know, prefer something that's swimming or crawling, uh, versus what's dead. It doesn't mean if they're not hungry, if they're hungry enough, they'll eat it. But I've seen them like to do the same thing with crawfish. You've ever seen a, I call it a crawfish migration where they'll actually move from one body of water to another across land and there'll be thousands of them. And you'll see where the, where the birds have just hoovered them and then they just left. They're like, eh, yeah, let's, we're done. Let's go home, kids, you know, kind of thing. So, hey, Brian. We've got, yeah. um, so Christine's asking a question. Um, can you predict how the loss of this level of marine life will impact the rest of the ecosystem in the coming months? And that was kind of my question. What's this going to do to the food chain? If the if these fish are the small ones, sure. are we going to lose our big game fish now? I or? think that's a fair question. Um, the initial answer is um, the menhaden are so dense in population. You know, tens of thousands is a big number. But when you start thinking it in terms of millions or even hundreds of millions, and the, the transient nature of those bait fish and those fish, those predator fish are going to go where the prey are. Uh, they're going to move out. They're going to follow them. They're going to find them somewhere else. Um, so I think in the short term, if you're a fisherman, you can say, I ain't catching no fish around here. And, and then maybe, you know, because maybe there's not any, any, any bait fish right in that exact spot, but they're going to move in. They're going to, they're going to always be there. And so it, it is, it is a big number, but I've not heard anything from anyone to say that, that it's going to have this chain reaction, that it was a big enough kill that it will impact that. I think you've got, um, you know, the, the, the whole numbers game where there's just so many of them, um, you know, they'll, they'll find something else. And, and menhaden isn't the exclusive diet. What eats menhaden will eat crabs, will eat uh, mullet, will eat other things. And so they will, they will move on. Yeah. Um, not a whole lot, not, mm -hmm. sure. um, yeah. Yes. Yes, it's a, it is, it will complicate it. And, and even the microorganisms that are breaking down from that the, the eutrophic event on those nutrients that are coming down the river, that will accelerate it. That will, again, it compounds the problem. Um, the other thing is we're not 100% sure where they died. Um, there's, they've, there's any variety of places where offshore they did it. And it's not like the entire Brazoria County coast had low oxygen. It's more of areas around there. You know, um, if you think of it, and again, I, my job is to be a 20 minute expert on stuff. If you want any more on a postdoctoral thesis, we can bring in a biologist and talk about it. But the water, we think of water temperature, and this is fresh or salt, and it's not like air. Um, it, it is, but, it, but it's much more concentrated. So if you think of it in the winter time, the coldest water is on the top. The warmest water is deep. In the summertime, it's just the opposite. And so those temperatures of water will shift. And as they shift in fall and springs, if those coincide with cloudy days and not windy days, they will compress that oxygen and those things in the water column, actually. It will, really, it will really start to do that. And that will accelerate it even more. So you have all of these things going on at the same time. Like I said, if any one or two of them don't happen, we probably don't have this event. But since all of them kind of consecutively happen back to back to back, that's what you're what you're getting out there. So it's safe. The water testing has been done nonstop. We have no reason to believe that we have this, you know, off the chart bacterial count or anything else going on. There was no chemical spill. It was not a red tide. Um, the beaches are clean. Uh, we expect the beaches to be packed this weekend. So anyway, yeah, no, no, no. I know I've got other things to do, but thank you for your time. Let me do that and appreciate you guys.
Okay. One second. Thank you, Brian, for that um, extra commentary. That was, I, we're learning a lot today, guys. <laughs> okay, oops, sorry. <laughs> Where is he? He's gone. I don't know, he did, he, he said he was 14 and 83, so. <laughs> He's aged well. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So just a little recap on our um, advanced training day. Um, and thank you, Christine, for putting this together. Um, so we had our look back at Texas history on uh, Saturday, May 20th. Thanks to the folks that came. It was super interesting. Um, we had five presentations on a variety of topics. Had 63 attendees. Um, our financial report, a little snapshot there. Um, we brought in a um, little uh, $1,146 of fees. Our expenses were 707 and the balance um, of 440 will be available for future events. And I have to say, um, Dr. Smedley, who Smedley, I hope I said that right, um, was uh, uh, kind of our main presenter. He refused to be reimbursed for his travel. So he traveled here on his own dime. I believe he lives in New Mexico. Um, he would not let us reimburse him. And he said he just felt so um, honored to be, to be able to come and talk to us. But he also believes in the mission of the master naturalist. And he said, no, this is this is my little contribution towards the work that you're doing. So um, that was really extremely generous of him. Um, well, thank you, our presenters. I saw Chris was here. Yep, Chris was one of our presenters. I was um, the committee, Christine, Mickey, Angela, Amanda. I know I'm leaving somebody out, Rose. There's probably somebody else I'm leaving out, but it it really was a very good event. And what was cool was watching the speakers kind of watching each other and then interacting with each other and asking each other questions during their presentations, things that I would never have thought of. And then um, we have a potential project that's come out of that. Um, Susan Conady um, with Nash Prairie um, is going to be working with Dr. Smedley, um, hopefully, on doing a survey on, I believe it's pocket gophers, um, but something the doctor was working on. And so anyway, so there, those connections are being made at these events. So that's good. OK, and then these are just some pictures. Chris, I apologize. No one took pictures during your presentation we were all watching you and then afterwards like oh we forgot just a few few pictures i know that i had to grab that from christine's i love that picture though i i was kind of hoping you were going to come do it in costume okay um our operating handbook we're ready at the next meeting, we will have a vote on whether or not we are going to ratify those changes. So Connie has emailed them to every member. We asked for comments. Um, you could have emailed comments, questions, suggested changes. Um, nobody sent us anything. Nobody came to the board meeting to talk about it. So comment period being passed now. Um, it was approved by the board of directors. Um, and at the July meeting, we will vote on whether to ratify it. And I realize it's probably everybody's going, oh, God, what do you? but we have to do this. So just help us out here. Is <laughs> uh, mm, Don still here? Yes. 
And I realize we're, we've gone a little long today, guys, so I apologize. Morning, everyone. You gotta, Is this thing get, on? gotta get real close to it. Is this thing on? Well, here, use this one. Hello. Got it? You can hear him? Okay, go ahead. Okay, as you, you already heard part of the presentation about the our AT event, uh, our revenues basically included the AT event, some dues. Wound up finally getting the deposit for some had been ordered from months ago. Went to the bank. Uh, as far as our, so I that included the revenue of $2,020.04. Uh, as far as expenses, we had the AT event, obviously, which included $150 from the church. Basically, what we gave them four years ago when we were there the last time. Cheap person that I am, I gave them 150 bucks again. Uh, part of that also included $114.15 that Rose had to give Ziggler's as a advanced deposit for our interim shirts. Uh, the price of shirts has gone up significantly. It used to be four and five dollars, is now eleven, twelve dollars. So the prices have skyrocketed. So just be prepared for that. So I think we can church the number. Uh, our total expenses for 855.30, and the balance of 12,979.06. Uh, pretty much that's the end of our, in, our income for the year. There'll be a few little odds and ends, but generally speaking, there won't be much. So, but it'll be from now on, we'd be pretty much expenses if what we have up. Any questions about? We talked about? Thank you. Okay. Yeah. And then um, something we're going to start doing since people have been asking questions, um, I will put this in. They will be part of the meeting minutes, so they'll be easy to find online. They'll also be part of the board meeting minutes. Again, you can find them on our website. Um, I realize that's all small, um, but you'll be able to see. And if you have questions, you can. Ask me. You can ask Don. Um, don't have to do it here. But so this was all of our incomes for the first five months. This is our chapter operating expenses. I don't said we haven't had much yet, but from here going forward, there'll be stuff every month. So this is the first part of the expenses. And then this is the intern expenses. And the intern fees are set. That the fees coming in should offset the expenses. So we try to make that a wash. Again, this will be in our meeting minutes. OK, Ruby, do you want to talk about the library series? Of course. This okay, well, we are started. We've already done two programs. There's one tomorrow. Thank you, those that took my read my email and contacted me. Yes, we have enough for tomorrow. <laughs> what I brought today about the calendar back, one of the easiest ways to keep track, then you can stick in your refrigerator. Then you put on your phone, whatever. I was asked about there's phone numbers, there's addresses at the bottom. So if you would need this, take one. I have more there for you. Well, the easiest way to volunteer for me with this event is get one of these, put a mark on which ones you want to volunteer for, put your name at the top, give me one, and keep a copy. This is my work, so it's messy. It's normally y'all wouldn't even see this. But this is where the people that have already signed up, if you want to check and make sure that you have not been left off, which is possible. Also, 
at least three of the libraries do not have enough volunteers yet. Others have elusive volunteers. And I thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Lake Jackson, what happened to Lake Jackson? Lake Jackson, Clute, and Sweeney have about half as many as they need. Please help us out. And we've had good attendance to the two, even the one under the tree in the backyard. We had close to 80 there. The only change on this is Brazoria. They've decided instead of having two relatively small uh, programs, they're going to have one larger program. It will not be at the library. The library program will not be at the library. Don't ask me. That's going to be at the Civic Center in the gym instead. Do you have any questions? I may start this time. And this is the, um, the other thing we'll have going on is the shark celebration at Sea Center the middle of next month. And Jordan's, um, Jordan Kiefer is going to be looking for folks. And um, we're going to try to put together a uh, sea turtle um, booth from the chapter. OK. Um, kind of the same. I'm just going to go through this, Orrin, quick. You got something? Yeah. This close? Yeah, just a couple of quick things. Uh, one, and, and speaking of sea turtles, uh, we are about to come at a close for our Kemp's Ridley nesting season. Uh, it typically starts slowing way down within the next couple of weeks. Uh, loggerheads will typically nest on through August. But the reason I mentioned sea turtles is if you've not patrolled and do have interest in patrolling, say next year, uh, Please get on their training calendars. We're required to take two sets of trainings, one from that's uh, put on by Padre Island, then our local training. Uh, so be sure you uh, get in line for those trainings because they are required. And uh, either contact Roland Davis with Sam Menard or let me know, and I'll make sure your name gets on the list so you get the notifications when those trainings will occur. Uh, the other thing, uh, construction projects. We've been on hold for a few weeks. Now that it's get, getting good and hot, uh, I think some materials were ordered last Friday for a couple of projects out at Sam Menard. We're going to be redecking the uh, uh, boat dock at uh, Cedar Lake Creek and also uh, the platform on Moccasin Pond. So if you're interested in, uh, in some decking work, well, let me know and I'll put you on our distribution. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. Um, Mel, do you want me to just talk or do you want to talk? Okay. All right. This Saturday, we have intern graduation. So please come and support our interns. Um, they are going to have um, project presentations. Um, we're going to learn about some different micro habits of three different areas. So here's our graduates, Barbara, Brian, um, Chad, Chris, Kim, Julie, Marlon, and Pam. And it'll be from 10 to 1 here. Um, so please come and uh, show, show our support. Yes, Melanie. Yeah, stand up. Marlon, Barbara. So these are two of our interns. Okay. Yes, Jimmy, question. You do get AT for those presentations. So if you need whether you need AT or not, come on down. Okay. <laughs> Okay. All right. Okay, here we go. 
So um, we do need mentors, okay? The best way to keep a new member, keep an intern wanting to come back, is having a mentor, okay? So please, if you haven't volunteered to help out, I need, we're going to need more people because we have more people coming into the program this summer and this fall, okay? So please, 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 please. Um, sign up and you can contact Kate who was in last year's class and um, so she's taking this on and um, we need your help okay Kate stand up that's Kate Yes, so Kate did Kate did send out an email, and Kate, maybe we should send it out again, saying this is what the mentors, what the program is, and what the mentors are expected to do, okay? Yes, we did, but it's a good idea to send it out again. Thank you, Kathy. Okay, so final stuff here. Um, the board's not going to meet in July. It's, yay. <laughs> It's right, it's right next to the fourth. It's just, it's just too hard. So we're going to take a break. But if there's something you guys need, want to talk about, just let me know. Annual meeting is still in October. Um, if there's people that are thinking of going, please let me know because we may be able to get a van and go together and save a lot of fuel. Okay? So let, let me know. Um, also, um, we're coming up on needing to convene our nominating committee. It's that time again. So, um, past president typically heads up that committee. So that'll be Mickey. If she asks you to help, please, please help her. Okay. Um, if you have an interest in a in one of the elected board positions or even one of the director positions, let us know. Okay, um, this chapter needs volunteers to keep running. It's not, you know, unfortunately, it's not just going out and volunteering. There's the business side of it, and I know that's boring, and it is work, but this is how we keep going. Okay. Yeah, and Melanie said you will be welcome to the board. Okay, so do we have any last questions from anybody? I know we went long today, but it was a great meeting. Anything online, Larry? Okay, I had an hour and a half for AT. Hour and a quarter. Okay, hour and a quarter. Okay, hour and a quarter, AT. Hour and a quarter, AT, one hour volunteer time. Okay. Huh? I'm sorry. All right. Um, no further questions. I call this. Yes, Kathy. Oh, yep. Hold on. Yep. Thank you for reminding me. Oh, come on. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. All right, so next month, evening meeting, 6 o'clock, 5.30 social time. We're going to have an ice cream social. So it would be a great time to bring a friend for some ice cream. Um, our AT presentation will be Sarah Weller, who's Senior Manager, International Coastal Cleanup, Ocean Conservancy. And she's going to be talking about um, one of the things she's going to be talking about is clean swell, right? Yeah. And how they use all the data. Okay. All right. Great. All right. Thank you all. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everybody, for coming. <laughs>